It's Brian Preston, the money guy. We're going to kick it off with Matthew's question. He says, I'm a member member of the Carpenters Union, and we have a pension, savings, and annuity plans. That being said, should I still be saving 25% or, hot take, would Ramsey's 15% be okay? Ooh, okay. So we get this question a lot, Brian. Someone says, hey, I work in a unique job. I have one of those things that most people don't have. I have a pension. My employer is telling me, hey, when you retire, I'm going to put money aside that I'm going to commit to guarantee a certain income for you when you retire. I'm going to have that pay for the remainder of your life, or perhaps I'm going to have it pay for the remainder of you and your spouse's life. So knowing that I have this other type of retirement plan sitting out there, knowing that I have that income stream coming, should that change the way I approach saving now? Do I really need to do 25% or can I get away with doing less? Or how should I think about that when it comes to saving for financial independence? Well, Matthew, fortunately, we're very math-minded people, so we can actually give you all the answers and all the variables to look at to kind of make this decision. A good portion, if you have a pension, I bet that your employer has a, comp- a contribution where they say, okay, to get this pension, you have to give 6 to 8% towards the pension, and then we, the employer, are going to put 8 to 10% also in. You can count that portion that you are giving towards the pension plan always. Mm -hmm. Now, for the portion that your employer is also giving on your behalf, if your income is below $200,000 a household or $100,000 for a single individual, then you can also count the employer portion in that calculation. Now, there is a big asterisk I want to put on this. I'm assuming this pension plan is something that has a annual statement that you can go see what the lump sum value is because that lump sum, because a lot of times now with pensions, you will have the choice of do you want to roll this money mm-hmm. out or do you want to take it as a, an annuity stream where you essentially get the, the, the payments monthly like a paycheck in retirement. Sure. That's what the pension is. So as, assuming you have a cash value, that's how I want you to handle that component of it is on your savings rate. Now, he asked the second part, Bo. Mm-hmm. He asked about 15% versus our 25%. Sure. I think it's important because this will get cut up into a highlight. We just did a show where we we, we talked about a 20-year-old who invested only for the 10 years of their mm-hmm. 20s, a 30-year-old that only invested in their 30s, and then a 40-year-old that only invested the 10 years they were in their 40s. And it was amazing. Same amount of money. It, was, it worked out to be $6,000 a year, mm-hmm. $60,000 per decade. The 20 something had the potential for their money just with $60,000 invested turn into one and a half million dollars. Yep. The 30 year old had the same $60,000 turn into a little over 500,000. The 40 year old was somewhere around a quarter like of a million dollars. Yeah. Do you see the steep drop off? Mm-hmm. So I think about all of those people. Look, this is not, it didn't have to be a Dave versus the money guy show. It could just be, you and your behavior of saving 50, saving and investing 15 versus 25, if you're in your 20s and 30s and you're missing that 10%, it literally could be a seven-figure mm-hmm. difference, mm-hmm. a million-dollar difference. I know a lot of people will say, well, yeah, but I'm paying down a mortgage. Think about how much cheaper this house is going to be because I didn't have all that interest. Mm-hmm. Well, more than likely, now look. I know since 2021, now mortgages are 6 and 7%. But for most people pre-21, the mortgages are 4% and less. Mm-hmm. The spread between that 4% you're paying down on your mortgage versus the 8 to 11% you're making on your diversified portfolio over the long term is just too much of a gap to be overcome. And the, the, don't, don't turn compounding interest upside down. Let it work for you. Harness the power of it so you don't think just linear. When you think about paying off your mortgage when you're in your 20s and 30s, you're thinking in a linear fashion about the mortgage interest you're, you're saving. I want you to think exponentially about the $60,000 that the 20-year-old investing that's turning into $1.5 million, or the $60,000 that the 30-something is investing that turns into over a half a million dollars. That's thinking exponentially. That's thinking about compounding growth. I think I tell all my pensioners this, right? Even though you might not, quote unquote, have to have that high savings rate, what will happen is by doing it, you give yourself options. And we get to financial independence. It's all about flexibility. It's about options. It's about being able to do the things that we want to do. So maybe what the 25% savings rate allows you to do 
is when you hit that retirement age, maybe it's 55, maybe it's 50, you actually have enough in resources built up that it can last you for the rest of your life. You don't have to go find an act two, a second part of your job. I think while you can save it that 25% because of exactly what Brian said, how powerful those dollars could be, I don't think it's a crazy thing to do at all.